Hey everyone, what's up? It's Amber Bro here, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make diagonal walls. That can also include uh, walls for like buildings, um, walls for hills, and stuff like that. Um, as you see in my latest video, I had like these sort of really neat looking mountains, or not mountains, like hills and stuff. And I'm going to be showing you how to do that. First, you're going to need the GIMP, or unless of course you're knowledgeable with other software, but for my case, I'm going to be using the GIMP. And if you want to make your GIMP look like mine, you have to click Windows, and you have to click on Single Window Mode. Now, we're going to hold Control and press O to open up um, the files that we need. You're going to navigate to your to your Games folder, which should be in your Documents. You're going to select your Game, IMG, Tile Sets, and we're going to open up Tiles A5 and, and or Outside A5 and Outside B. If you hold Control and click, you can select multiple files, and we're going to open both of them. Now, click on Outside A5, and we're going to go to View, Show Grid. Then we're going to go to Image, Configure Grid, and it's going to be 48 by 48. Click OK. By the way, you have to press Enter there, uh, otherwise it won't change, I believe. So what we're going to do is we are going to select the bot we're going to select the bottom hill here. We're going to select three tiles up. So we have these three tiles selected. We're going to hold Control and press C to copy. Now we're going to go over to the layer uh, outside B, and we're going to click, and then we're going to create a new layer by clicking here, pressing Enter. We're going to hide the bottom layer, and we're going to go to Images, Show Grid, and we're going to make the grid 48 by 48 again, like so. And uh, somewhere in the middle, we're going to hold Control and press V, and we're going to paste what we have copied. Now we're going to move it to the and we're going to make sure that's in the grid. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to select this color tool here. And we're going to we're going to click here and you're going to hold left shift and you're going to keep clicking all of the greens. So, we're going to get rid of everything that's green. By the way, you can hold control and scroll to zoom in. So, once you've selected everything that's green, we're going to press delete on the keyboard to delete all the green tiles. This is kind of important. Now, we're going to select the three tiles up, as we did before. This is the importance of the grid. And what we're going to do is we are going to do the perspective tool here. And we're going to drag this corner here over two and up one. So over two and up one, make sure that the corner piece here is matching up with as close as the corner of, of it as you can get. Now, for the bottom one, this is going to go over to an up one as well. Like, like so. As you can see here, it's as close as it's going to get. There we go. And now, we're going to select the interpolation type over here. We're going to select None. Then we're going to click Transform. Now, it's going to look very weird. So, <clears throat> we don't want the textures to look like this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to here. We're going to select the centerpiece here because this is a repetitive tile, meaning uh, it loops. So we're going to copy that tile. Now what we're going to do is we are going to check this little box here. You're not there's not going to be a check mark, so it's kind of hard to tell if you've selected it or not. Basically, it locks the alpha channel. So then we're going to select the paint bucket tool. We're going to select pattern. We're going to do, we're going to go to clipboard, and you're going to select I hate when it does that, and we're going to select fill whole area, and then paste. As you can see, the texture is now changed. Now we're going to unselect this by clicking it a second time. Hold, or we're going to select the uh, rectangle tool. We're going to drag all the way around it. Click Auto Shrink. Hold Control Press C. Hold Control Press V. Select the flip tool and reverse it like so, and drag it right next to each other in the exact alignment like so. Now we're going to do the exact same thing we did here. We're going to select all around it, auto shrink, hold control and press X this time, then press hold control and press V to paste it, and we're going to move it to as top left as a tile as we can. But we need to make sure that the bottom here is in line exactly in the center like so, so it's perfectly symmetrical, meaning the left edge is here and whatnot. Make sure you don't um, place something at the top like I'm doing here. This is a bad idea. So we're going to move down a tile. To move to do so, you can hold shift and then press the arrows and you can keep on aligning and, until it's proper like so. Get that right there like that and we're good. Now what you're going to do is you're going to export this 
and we're going to call it diag.png. You can call it whatever you want. And here's one from my failed experiments. So basically what you're going to do after that is go into your database, go to tile sets, and on an empty one, which would likely be D unless you've already modified your tile set, you would select the new tile set, in this case, diag. Uh, I'm going to erase this here so I can show you how, how it's all done. And now, when you make a when you make half of something like this, you can go to the diag, select these, and there you go. And apparently, I just got a subscriber, which is pretty awesome. I'm not even live streaming. Uh, anywho. Um, I wish I could see who that was, but I don't have my live stream set up, and yes, I am using OBS for this. Now, you're going to run into this issue where you're not going to have these things, but don't worry, I will also show you how to fix that. So now you can finish doing your thing. And we're going to... We're going to go... Just keep playing around with it, and as you can see, it looks pretty darn good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add the things that we're missing here. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to select the top tile here, like so. Then we're going to click the color tool, we're going to hold control and click the grass until, no until nothing else but this is selected. Now we're going to hold control and press C. We're going to do the same similar thing that we did here. We're going to paste it over here, make sure it's in line. So once you pasted it, we are going to copy it again. Paste it over two more times to the right, like so. So we have this long diagonal in this time. We're going to select all of it. We're going to select all three of these tiles here. In the perspective tool, we are going to do something very similar. We're going to take the top left one here, drag it up as close to the top left corner as possible. And the bottom one here, we are going to drag up one as well, as close to the corner as possible transform drag it on over here and just stamp it anywhere along top now you're gonna run into this issue here but this is okay because what we can do now well we want to make sure this is on a new layer first so we're gonna click new layer now we're gonna right click and go to layer to image size now what we can do here is we can hold control and press X after selecting some random parts and we can keep on moving it until it's just the way we want it. Like so. Until there's no more transparent spots. Doesn't have to look too great. Uh, but if you want to clean up some of the edges, we can do so by doing the erase tool, clicking hard edge, and clearing up some of the edges. Like so. Now once that's done, we can select the... We can get rid of all the other half right here. Like that. This is the importance of having a new layer. We're going to select all of this, auto shrink, control C, control V, flip, and put exactly like so. Now, once you've done that, we can re export it. And as you will see, we now have the walls um, pretty much perfected. Though you can run into small issues like this, but this can actually be fixed through um, taking the tiles here, as I will show you here. These little tiles here, what we're going to do is we're going to select these. We're going to select these four tiles here. Um, apparently my vocabulary just took a dump. So we're going to copy that and we're going to paste it. Let's put it under. Let's put it right about here. Like so. And we're going to actually hold Control Z. If you accidentally pasted it already, hold Control Z to undo the, the paste. And just make sure it's on a new layer as well. So then we're going to select all of the green. I apologize if this is confusing to anyone. So, so yeah, we're going to select all of the green, as I did before, and delete all the green. Next, we're going to re-export, and that's it. Now, if you run into sharp corner issues like so, all you have to do... Oops, let me... All you have to do is select one of these, and there you go. You can fix that sharp corner. Like, as you can see, we have a sharp corner here. Or, I just made a sharp corner, actually. But you get the point. We have a sharp corner here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste that there, and there is no longer a sharp corner. And thanks to MV's double um, double layering system, you can fix double sharp corners that are close together. And you have now successfully created curved 
walls. I know it's a bit of a process, and I do apologize again if it is confusing, but it does make your game look a lot better. See this? So let's go ahead and make a really quick map out of this, and just see how, see how it's gonna look. I'm just gonna cut out the video from here. Now I'm pretty tired, so I didn't put too much effort into this map, but as you can see, you can make your maps look a lot better because they're not quite as squarey. And that's, that's one of the things that actually bugs not only me, but I think that bugs every RPG Maker developer out there. How, like, the maps can be all, like, really, really squared-like. Um, you're gonna run into the issue where you're not gonna be able to put shadows on these kinds of walls. But that's okay, because all you have to do, if you want to place shadows, is copy your wall. We're going to... Hold on. Wait, oops. First, what we need to do is right-click, merge visible layers, uh, clip to image merge. So we're going to copy the walls by making sure we select these tiles here. And now we can auto shrink. We just make we just want to make sure that we don't select any of these uh, little pieces here. Auto shrink this, copy, paste, drag it underneath. Like make sure it's aligned like it is. There we go. Perfect symmetry. And from there, you can take and do a new layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a we're going to draw some random black spots, like so. It doesn't matter how icky it looks. And we're going to do some gray spots as well. It doesn't matter. It's all good. And what we're going to do now is we're going to select the smear tool, which is there's the smudge tool with like a little finger thing. We're going to select the size B48. And we're just going to kind of smear around like so. Don't worry about going outside of bounds because we're going to select a specific thing. So now on the on the layer that we just did, go to th this type and go to multiply. And if it's not dark enough, hold control press A and then hold control press C and then hold control and press B. And if that's too dark, you can continue to smear it and as long as it's on multiply, it should be good. Now we're going to re-export that and if you wanted to make a darker spot, go to D and we select the darker spot here oops that is not the there we go as you can see you now have a slightly darker spot and that is how you do it thank you guys so much for watching and I hope this helped and I will see you all later so